Hello hey guys, got a video here for you today on the Anschutz 9015 bench rest stock and in this one we're continuing on with the woodwork. Before we get into the video though, I do just very briefly want to say a big thank you to everyone who's bought the merchandise so far. For those unaware, we did recently start a little merchandise store where you can buy hats, hoodies and all that sort of thing. We only get a couple of quid from each sale but it's a good way to help fund the channel without having to force you guys into watching adverts. So a big thank you to anyone who's bought some merchandise so far. With that all said, we can get on with the video. The first thing to do as always is to flatten off the top and get everything nice and squared up. We're doing that with our 100mm shell mill and getting the top of the stock flattened down nicely. We will be coming back at a later date and lowering this height significantly, but it's always best to start off from a nice square and flat platform. With the top taken off we can get on with finishing the inletting and we're doing that with a 16mm radius router bit. This is the same radius as the actual cylinder of the 9015 and we're just coming through the stock milling out the waste material. We are going to be floating the cylinder on this rifle and what this means is the actual cylinder of the rifle won't touch the stock, it'll be free floating. I don't want a massive gap around the cylinder as I think the stocks look a little funny when there's a big gap between the cylinder and the wall of the stock. But about half a millimetre clearance either side should do the trick. But as the spindle speed of the mill is fairly slow, we are going slow with the cuts, taking nice conservative cuts with a fairly slow feed speed. As the cutter is the same radius as the cylinder, it will cut pretty much a perfect fitting cylinder into the stock. So once we're to the depth we require, we can come back and just clean up the sides, widening the slot slightly to give us a little bit of clearance between the stock wall and the cylinder. And once we're happy, we can test the fit and then use some paper to make sure that there's no pinch points between the stock and the cylinder. With that done we can move on to the next operation which is milling the sides down. At the moment the cylinder is buried fairly deep within the stock and that obviously doesn't look very good. What we're going to be doing is using a 22mm router bit and just milling down the sides. At this stage it's imperative that we don't get any bust out as the inside of the stock is now a finished surface. So again taking nice shallow cuts and climb milling in the direction of the laminates. This means that we're cutting into the laminate rather than trying to bust the laminate out. After a little bit of milling we got the stock down to the final depth. I decided to take the walls down to just over the centre line of the cylinder as I felt that was the place it looked the best. But there we have it, there's the action and the cylinder all inlet into the stock. Next up we flipped the stock over in the vise and milled the front flat. This was just a rough saw cut finish before, so we're just squaring it up there and giving us a definitive edge. This will be shaped further at a later date, we are going to rake the front of the stock back slightly, but that'll be done at a later date, probably with the belt sander. Once the front of the stock was flat, we could put in some decorative slots in the side of the stock, and to do the slots we're using a long 8mm end mill, coming through and plunging the layers out two at a time. I took this fairly slow as I didn't want to risk busting out the back side of the stock into our newly milled cylinder well. I did both the top and the bottom side of the stock in one operation for two reasons. Number one to save us a little bit of time setting up and number two to make sure that the slots themselves lined up perfectly on either side. But the stock itself is fairly deep, it's 64mm as supplied from lamina, so the long end mill was a necessity. Up next we flip the stock back over in the vise to the setup we had earlier and start on some of the decorative features. In this setup what we're doing is running the ball end mill, the 32mm one that we used in the previous setup, to create a decorative finish on the sides. As this is a bench rest stock we're going to be having a full width, so 64mm, flat plate like section on the bottom of the stock and that will just sit on our bench rest stand nice and securely. To transition from the thinner top end of the stock to the fatter bottom end of the stock we're using the radius of the end mill just to create a nice blend. You'll see what I mean as we progress through the milling but we're just taking nice shallow cuts across the face peeling back each lamination till we get the stock thickness that we require. Now at this point we have to decide what colour laminations we want the sides of the stock to be. We can either have grey or blue and I chose blue for the sides. 
So we're milling down until we get the stock thickness that we desire and also the correct color of the lamination we want. Luckily the sides of this cutter do have a return on them. So there's a straight section and also the radius that we used earlier. All this means is that there will be no steps or anything like that when we run our fingers across the sides of the stock. The next operation is just to create a decorative fillet on the top edge. To do this we're using a radius bit and just running it along the top edge of the stock to thin down the top and also put a little decorative finish on it. And as the main colour of the side of the stock is going to be blue, we contrasted this by taking this down to a grey laminate. But there we have it, there's pretty much the stock up until this point. Now I did do some things off camera, so what I'll do now is take you over to the bench and I'll show you the stock and also point out the things that we've done off camera. Right then guys, that's pretty much all the work done to the stock so far. As we just said, we did do a couple things off camera, so I'll point them out to you very quickly. The first thing we've done was just radius this edge here. So as we look at it from the top there, this start to the foot here is nicely radius and we did that by just plunging the cutter down the side there and getting that radius put in on both sides. And there we have it. The next things is obviously this little radius here. Again, that was just done with the cutter. We are going to sort of radius this edge here so it sort of swoops up and over. Next things, we've also cut the cheek piece and the bottom piece out from the stock here. The plan for this stock is to have an adjustable cheek piece up and down and also an adjustable ledge at the bottom here. So here are the two pieces of wood we've got. This one is obviously the cheek piece, and this one at the bottom here is obviously the bottom piece. The idea of this is to create an adjustable bag rider so we can get the perfect height for the back of the stock. These two pieces were just cut out using the bandsaw, and if I'm honest, the setup took longer than actually cutting the material, and I wasn't in the mood to get all the camera set up, just a video about 30 seconds of cutting. But there we have it, the cheek piece and the bottom piece nicely cut out. We are obviously going to be making the riser for the cheek piece and also the riser for this bottom piece here. The idea between these two is to have it on thumb screws so you can easily adjust it while you're sitting at the bench without having to take sort of an allen key to anything. I want everything adjustable and lockable without any tools. And this sort of thing will be the focus of the next video. We've got to make a riser, a riser for this bottom piece here and an adjustable butt piece. I do want to try and make sort of a one piece unit that fits in the back of the stock here which everything bolts to so that it's a nice contained unit. But we'll have to see what we can design and fit in the stock and get it all working. But there we have all the work done to the stock so far. It is a bit bulky and a bit big, but that's what sort of the aim of the stock is. It is a bench rest stock, so it is a bit of bulky. But hopefully, once we get everything rounded out and a bit of shape to the stock, it will look a bit more light and a little more interesting. Another sort of thing that I want to do with this stock is sort of play around with the lamination colours. So we obviously have two colours of lamination. We have the blue and the grey. And I want to try and get them contrasting each other like we did in this top section here. So we have the blue of the side and then this grey section here, which we cut away and expose to create a little bit of contrast on both sides there. And we're going to play with that throughout the stocks so that the stock both looks nice and functions exactly how I want it to function. With that all said and done guys, that's pretty much going to do it for this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.